How are you doing tonight? Praise God. Good to see you all here and those who are joining us online. We welcome you and appreciate you taking the time out to connect with the word of God tonight as we are in Christ Kingdom Studies here at Increasing Faith Deliverance Ministries International. We are here to declare the gospel of Christ, which is the gospel of the kingdom and we, we appreciate you joining us to hear and to connect with the word get your bible and your notepad and your pen and let's get to this opportunity use this opportunity to dive into the word amen praise god lift those hands to jesus we just want to acknowledge our father father we just praise you and acknowledge you for being in our midst you said we are two or three are gathered touching anything in your name you're in the midst of them you're here tonight we didn't come looking for you we came with you and we know that you're here to unleash and unveil the mysteries of your kingdom to us that we will know the riches of the inheritance we have in the saints and that i pray that at the end each person's faith will, will be added oh god hallelujah grace will be added to each person's faith for them to have a deeper and richer relationship with you more rooted and grounded in the faith of our lord and savior jesus christ we praise you that your angelic hosts are around us now and that your you have this arm of counsel and work of Satan, every spirit of frustration, depression, every spirit of distress and anxiety and unbelief, doubt, fear, confusion, distortion and distraction. We bind right now in the name of Jesus Christ and we pray that you will just make the atmosphere and era conducive now for releasing this word that our word will pierce every heart oh God and that it will produce fruit and fruit that will remain we look to you as the author and the finish of our faith and we know you who began a good work you're more than able and faithful to perform it and so we thank you and give it a praise and claim good report in Jesus' name amen come on give him the praise one more time hallelujah praise god you may be seated thank you all for joining us we want to get into the word there's a every time we come about the gospel of the kingdom and come to teach in this message i'm i get excited hallelujah because i believe there is so much more for us to learn in this era that that is more than that meets the eye amen and so we just got to look into it and see what the the Lord is saying the gospel that Jesus preaches is the gospel of the kingdom of God we always start that way especially for those that might be joining us for the first time and might not have heard it like this before that they will really look into the scripture and see that it is really true and not something new someone is making up to try to get people's attention hallelujah um, it's in Matthew chapter 4 verse 23 tells us that jesus was teaching and preaching the gospel of the kingdom hallelujah it says jesus went about all galilee teaching in their synagogues all galilee he went and in every synagogue that he went in galilee he was preaching what the gospel of the kingdom and healing all kinds of sicknesses and all kinds of what diseases among the people praise god so healing and uh, of sicknesses and diseases hallelujah was a, a demonstration of the kingdom being present it is a means of of confirming the word that he declare when he declare repent for the kingdom of heaven is at hand the kingdom must show up to show that what is happening in heaven can happen here in the earth amen praise god which is what he was preaching much about and he wants us to understand the operation of that kingdom amen matthew 9 verse 35 also declares the same thing we didn't leave from matthew because we could find another gospel but would basically be saying the same thing but persons can pick verses just to tailor them together but we are choosing from the same book to show you that it wasn't said to just repeat itself this is actually what jesus was doing all the time praise god and Matthew 9 verse 35 says then jesus went about all the cities what 
all the cities and villages teaching in their synagogues preaching the gospel of the kingdom hallelujah and healing every sickness and every disease among the people now that don't mean that everybody in the city and everybody in the villages were healed of sickness but it means that those who believed the gospel and believed him and believed on him received that grace amen just the same way we can preach the gospel here and many people be in the city and they still don't receive the gospel they they didn't come to hear and they don't want to hear and they're not interested to hear same way some persons will hear that jesus is healing and some would never go some would always be in disbelief and said no it's a lie those things are being said to attract a crowd and persons would sit together and have negative thoughts and things to say just like they would today hallelujah and oftentimes miss out on their blessing miss out on their breakthrough because they just allow the naysayers to speak them out of their blessing amen praise god because everyone who who understands the, the nature of how god operates know that god doesn't do things just because he can do it he has a purpose and an intent behind everything he's doing is driven by purpose amen and so we who understand must know that this is what jesus was doing he was preaching to them the gospel of the kingdom and we wanted to understand more about that gospel tonight praise god and he also told his disciples to to preach the gospel of the kingdom and those that are apostles they were taught by him to preach the gospel of the kingdom in matthew 10 hallelujah hallelujah verse verse 7 and verse 8 he told them what to say and what to do hallelujah and these he was telling sending out there all his disciples were not preachers but there some who were anointed and sent out to preach who were later anointed and appointed as apostles and he says as you go preach saying the kingdom of heaven is at hand heal the sick cleanse the lepers raise the dead cast out demons freely you have received freely give praise god and so that shows that he taught them to do the same thing that he was doing and to teach the same thing that he was teaching amen praise god and in matthew chapter 24 verse 14 declares that this gospel is the what will actually usher in the end the end is ushering through the preaching of this gospel it says and this gospel of the kingdom will be preached in all the world as a witness to all the nations and then the end will come amen praise god and then the end will come so it's not about the wars and the rumors of wars and a nation against nation and kingdom against kingdom and uh, plagues and famines and pestilence all those things in matthew chapter 24 are mentioned but jesus said when you see all these things happen in the end is not yet so don't let anybody preach that to you as the end that is not the end if we hear how much earthquake break out in this country and how much people died and they say see the the end is upon us but it says no when you see all these things happening the end is not yet praise god and so if he says the end is not yet then that is not what ushers the end but what actually ushers in the end is the preaching of the gospel of the kingdom when it has been declared in all the world as a witness to all the nations then huh then the end will come praise god so uh, there are many people still don't understand or even have heard of the gospel of the kingdom they have heard about heaven and hell you know if you live right they die you go to heaven if you live wrong and you die you go to hell but the gospel of the kingdom wasn't about that it's more than that those are the impact of of you resisting or rejecting the gospel what will happen to you hallelujah but the the point of the matter is that the gospel is more than about what happened to you when they reject it or receive it and we want persons to know that because we want you to understand it, it's really about the kingdom of god as synonymously used with the term the kingdom of heaven 
Amen. Praise God. And so we always want to reinforce that for persons to understand that the message that they preach about heaven is not the gospel of the kingdom. Amen. Just the same way when you preach about the, the, the kingdom of God, the, uh, it's not the same thing as saying the, 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 the heaven. Uh, the kingdom of heaven is not the same thing as preaching about heaven. As the same way we says Jesus of Nazareth is not Nazareth. Right? It is Jesus of Nazareth and the emphasis of the teaching is on Jesus and not on Nazareth. The same way the kingdom of heaven is not the emphasis of the teaching is not on heaven. It's about the kingdom of heaven. Praise God. And so the kingdom proceed from there. That's why it's mentioned as the kingdom of heaven or the kingdom of God because it proceed from God. But it is more than just teaching on God and teaching on heaven. And we want people to understand that, that distinction that they really get into the meat of the matter that per, more persons can learn and understand what Jesus is bringing to the table. It's not a religion and uh, it, but it's really a, a, a pre-purposed plan that he had for all creation hallelujah to line up with his word and with his purpose and calling over their life in alignment with his plan amen and that plan details out some things about his kingdom hallelujah praise God so one thing we can use to to lay the platform uh, is Genesis 1 verse 26. We often use that to show that a kingdom was given to man. A kingdom was what? Given to man. Adam was not given a religion in the Garden of Eden. What was given to Adam was a kingdom. Amen. Praise God. And it says in Genesis 1 verse 26, Then God said, Let us make man in our image and according to our likeness let them have dominion over the fish of the sea this dominion is part of the word that is used when we say kingdom the king's domain or the spear over which a king rules is his dominion is his rule is his reign it is his kingdom it is his what kingdom so the, the, it was detailing the parameters of the spear over which God had given man to rule look at it it is determined the parameter and spear of the era which God gave him to rule and he says let them speaking of both male and female have dominion over the fish of the sea over the birds of the air over the cattle of the field and over all the earth and over every creeping thing that creeps on. In other words, every creature moving on the earth is, and everything on the earth and the whole earth and all the, the things that are living creatures in the sea and in the air and crawling on land is under the dominion of man. Is part of his kingdom. Hallelujah. And the whole earth is given to him as his kingdom. Amen. Uh, it is also in Psalms 115, verse 16, hallelujah, that the heavens, even the heavens are the Lord's, but the earth as he given to the sons are the children of men. Amen. The earth he has given to the children of men. So he has given the earth to us. Hallelujah. But this fell into the hand of Satan through disobedience. Hallelujah. And it's based on a kingdom principle that who you submit to your property and estate also falls into their hand. And, and that is in Romans chapter 6 verse 16. Praise God. That um, the, to whom you yield yourself servants to obey. That is a kingdom principle. Do you not know that to whom you present yourselves slaves to obey, you are that one slave whom you obey, whether of sin leading to death or of obedience leading to righteousness. Now we know that sin came to man through the devil. A man was tempted by Satan to violate God's word which produced sin in his life 
and sin of course brought consequences of death and separation from God amen and so the, the, the word of God did say I believe it's in Matthew 5 where it says by one man sin sin entered the world and by sin death came upon all hallelujah so we know that is sin that brought the death and the devil has been using that death against humanity to drive them into a desperate position to keep violating and disobeying God's word which still will equal to a final judgment of condemnation and separation and destruction by God hallelujah where well, it says therefore just as through one man's sin entered the world death through sin thus death spread to all men because all sinned but it doesn't end there one man come to restore hello somebody so we were in bondage humans being in bondage to satan because when he chose to obey satan he fell under his power and fell under the power of one who is a fallen angel who have other angels that are fallen angels under his domain principalities and powers and rulers of darkness and spiritual wickedness in life under his domain and man was still below even demons that were below that so men had fallen man had fallen to have a very low place and christ had to come to have a very low place to restore him uh, man needed to be restored hallelujah but more than just man needed to restore the kingdom that was given to man also needed to be restored so most people know about jesus coming for to save man but they don't know about him coming to save a kingdom right so that's what jesus is bringing to them to understand a kingdom not just man was lost but a kingdom was lost amen hallelujah so so we find that he, he said for by one man's office many died much more the grace of god than the gift by the grace of one man jesus christ abound to many so jesus christ came that through grace hallelujah what was lost in man's identity in man's position in man's relationship with god and connection in seeing his fullness in him would be restored but also the kingdom that was given to man was also lost amen and that's why we find that while jesus was here he was being tempted by satan about that kingdom and we note something in that that that's in luke chapter 6 verse 5 to 6 we note something about our 4 verse 5 to 6 what is it Luke 5, Luke, Luke 6, yes, verse 5 to 6. Praise God. Hallelujah. Is Luke 6, Luke 5. Praise God. No, man. You're in the wrong place. Luke 4, look if it's Luke 4, verse 5 to 6. Praise God. Hallelujah. Yeah, that's it. Luke 4 verse 5 to 6. Then the devil, uh, now we, we note some from this that, that the devil will not tempt you with something that you don't want. <laughs> that would not be a temptation. Is that correct? So if he's tempting Jesus with this, he knows Jesus came for this. He didn't just come to save man, but he know he come to also restore the kingdom. Look at this in this verse. The devil didn't take him on a high mountain and show him all the religions and all the people. Why did the devil take him on a high mountain and show him? All the kingdoms of the world in a moment of time. And the devil said, all this authority I will give you. He know he come for it. And, but he says, I got it and I will give it to you. Because it was now in his possession. He says, no, I will give it to you and their glory. For this has been delivered to me. And I give it to whomsoever I wish we know that. And the Lord didn't give it to him. But the Lord gave it to man. And man now falling under his domain. Now all this was in his hand 
to give to whom he wished and he was seeking for the Lord to obtain it by worshipping him come on and the Lord is saying no you worship God to get the kingdom because you, you, you're holding on to it as an illegal tenant holding on to a property that's not really yours was not designated for you, you and so you're holding on to it illegally and so we don't have to compromise our position to get it from you it is still the message to the to humanity right now they don't have to compromise to get access to the kingdom that god have for them because every man want the kingdom you know whether they call it empire you know or the piece of the pie or they call it their 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 little paradise but they want to reach a place where they feel some sense of accomplishment and realizing certain dreams and visions and know that they're in a secure point now in their life and not really struggling as the way they were when they just started but in a more comfortable place where things are more in the range of being handled by them under their control. Amen. Nobody likes the idea of feeling helpless come on now and that's what the lord is saying that the kingdom gives you power the kingdom gives you power but he said you don't have to serve the devil to get power because true power belongs to god come on hallelujah so he said if you will worship before me all will be yours that's how some person sell out their soul for riches compromise on certain truth and principles to obtain certain things and then say hooray we, we did good well there's a judgment day coming and the lord did warn in scripture about that don't envy the prosperity of the wicked then we envy us of those who prosper in their evil scheme because their prosperity is short-lived come on the consequences are not far behind and it's coming hallelujah and so Jesus said to him, Get thee behind me, Satan, for it is written, You shall worship the Lord your God, and him only shall you serve. And then, and, and so that shows that he, he, this temptation was over by the term of what the Lord said to him. You, ser, you worship and serve God to get the kingdom. You don't have to worship and serve Satan to get the kingdom. And that's what Jesus was talking about in Matthew chapter 6, verse 33. Here he, he told him, you, you see first the kingdom of God. Because if, if you back up from verse 33 to some earlier verses where it says, what are the Gentiles seeking after? They're running after what we eat, what we drink. what we, He says, these things the Gentiles seek after. But the Father knows that you have need of these things. And then he says, but seek first. No, so Seek first the kingdom of God hallelujah and all his righteousness and all these things shall be added unto you so it's the same principle you say if you seek the king and his righteousness if you seek first the kingdom of god how does the king operate and how does he govern his kingdom if you seek to know that and do what is right in his sight he says all the things the world running down will be added to you oh that sound well me love all that sound that's why i made this tea night amen praise god because i know that it's it, if it not added yet it coming hallelujah because god is watching over his word to bring it to pass his word cannot return void and he's not slack concerning his promises so if you believe in the word then you are going to thrust all your effort and your time into knowing about the kingdom of God and what is right in his sight his righteousness amen and he says that he says that will bring you put you in the position that the things that they are running down will start to run you down praise God because favor you know, attract more favor also praise god and that's what god wants to happen for you as his children that will show to the world how better it is to serve him than to serve the devil but some people make it look like say when you're serving god you become the worst and and when you're serving the devil at that time you live life 
now most believers think like that because they do not know about the kingdom of god if they know about the kingdom of god they would not think like that and think like their life is just tailored with pure suffering and scraping from the pot butter man crumbs and you know uh, 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 you know, have to understand God have bigger and better plans for you. What do you say? Praise God. So we know that the kingdom of God is really declaring God's care over his people. Back up to some verses that I asked and we'll show some of that to them from verse 25 as you were showing. It says, therefore I say to you, do not worry about your life. Do not what? Worry about your life, what you will eat or what you will drink, nor about your body, what you will put on. Is not life more than food? It's something you need to consider. You know? Isn't life more than food and your body? Isn't your body more than the clothes that put on it? That's what he's saying. You know? Isn't your, your life more than food and your body more than raiment? The world doesn't know that. They keep on running for the food for the body. And food for life. And, and clothes for the body. Come on. But, but he says, life is more than that. Come on now. And he says, look at the birds. They neither sow nor reap nor gather into bonds. He's saying, you will sow and reap and gather into bonds. But he said, birds, they don't sow nor reap nor gather into bonds. Yet your heavenly father feed them. So he's saying, if they are doing less than what you doing and the father caring for them. Why should you think you doing so much should get less? That's what he's saying. And look at what he's saying. He said, look at the birds of the air. He's saying to take notice of them. Study how they live. He says, for they neither sow, huh? nor do they reap, nor gather into barns. Hallelujah. Yet your heavenly father feeds them. Are you not more value of more value than they? He says, don't you worry more than the birds of the air. Uh, so the person will say, you know, the animal lovers will kind of get offended with that, you know. Uh, they will just say, no, the life is a life. And the bird life is, your life is not better than a bird life. Well, you better know the Lord who created us. Say, me valuable more. I don't know about you, but yeah. The Lord who created us all, created both the birds and the insects and the plants and the trees, said, my life worth more than that. And I choose to go with what he said. Amen. He says, so are you not more of more value than they? Come on. Which one of you by worrying can add one cubit to his statue? I like all the... The, one of the new versions stated it says which one of you by worrying can add one hour to your life which one of you by worrying can add one hour to your life he says worrying don't make you live longer it actually shortens your lifespan weakens your immune system weakens your thought process Weakens your strength, weakens your health. Come on. So that's why he's telling his people from verse 5 that those were his disciples. Don't worry about your life. Come on, somebody. Worrying about your life does not add value to your life. Come on now. Hello. And the next verse. Praise God. He says, so why do you worry about clothing? Consider the lilies of the field, how they grow. Neither toil nor spin. He says, you toil and spin. People are to sew your clothes. You didn't wake up and just snap your finger. And, you know, clothes come on. And change the outfit. Just snap it again. Uh, be me up, Scotty. <laughs> no <laughs> praise God but he's telling you that uh, do you you toil and spin to 
to the, that's what they the toil and spin would be what they used to speak about someone sewing at the machine the toil and spin of sewing clothes putting threads together to form fabric and then fabric together to form clothes so he says all of that going into putting on clothes on you he says yet still Solomon was the richest man in his time come on now he says with all the clothes they could sew for Solomon it wasn't as new and fresh as the lily my god he clothed the lily in the valley and he clothed the grass of the field which is just imagine clothing grass which he say he know by even it be there and die and put in the oven and he said if he clothed grass that so short lived from morning to evening and still he clothed it do i know it going perish by evening will he not clothe you it's some serious questions you know because he wants them to understand more about the kingdom that God takes into consideration in his kingdom everything that pertains to you hello somebody now that was a that is a still a far stretch concept for some because they believe God is far a lifetime of years away up in his throne rocking in his rocking chair waiting for a time when something strike him and he get up and say all right let me check what's happening down there with them now if they mash up the planet and they need my help praise god but so they believe somehow god is not in tune with what is happening here and so they have to fight hard to get God attention. And the, 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 the religion teach you a lot of things to get God attention, man. The man, he can teach us. Them, they are them, they're in gymnastics now. Not reach Olympics yet. Hallelujah. There is some, some gymnastics which you. Hallelujah. <laughs> well, you, if you, you do this and if you do 21 days of fasting and if you if you wear some sackcloth and ashes and if you go up in the hills go pray and stay away from everybody don't make nobody see you if you lock in your room for seven days if you pray when you're naked <laughs> Lord have mercy and you'll be surprised some things that people come up with that they believe when they do that then they're going to get greater answer and greater attention from god amen but the christ is coming with the gospel of the kingdom for them to know that god is concerned and aware about the very minute detail about you even about the number of hair on your head now oh, them there are some real detail boy i tell you from the time i read that up till now i don't stop for count how much hair on my head and and i feel me a long, long time i have it i mean now we get to another head amen <laughs> come on now but I, I don't i've never met anybody who really sit down and count too much here did they? you ever do it why all if you have all you all then get 25 years of prison you're not going to sit in our county you have all the time on your hand but what he says he knows come on now he says what he knows and not only knows but he knows even when one fall from it leave what remaining <laughs> come on somebody that is some detail knowing man come on now uh, but he says the very hairs of your head are all numbered do not fear therefore you are more valuable huh? than many sparrows he spoke that you know aren't two sparrows sell for a coin two sparrows you know I mean say they consider the life of a sparrow to be cheap that two of them will sell for one coin one denaro and he says man he, 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 but he, he says not even one of those sparrows fall from the sky outside of the father's will if the father don't will for that sparrow to fall they could have fired the one fire and not reaching him 
so he says he is the one made that provision for them even with the life of the sparrow come on now so he says how much more care is over you because he says aren't you worth more than many sparrows some people are not quite convinced of that yet you know so but the gospel of the kingdom is to bring this reality to you of the kind of care and 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 the kind of planning that god put into place over your life for it to be the life that he wants it to be he has taken everything into consideration hallelujah and most of the time we end up in the the messy part of it because we are ignorant of him and his plans for us and we are mostly living lives of trial and error and anyone knows that if you're trying out some things in this life without knowing the fullness of what you're trying you can put yourself in some very dangerous and fatal spot hello so sometimes many become uh, what they call casualties because they, they, they are not really conscious of the, the, the purpose of life and the plans God has for them, for their life. And they go about seeking their own. And as a result of that, then they say, boy, life hard, you know. But life is not hard. You experience hard things in life, especially when you're not seeking God's way. Because who know about life better than the one? who made it praise god so when you are trying out some things in life you are you are doing living some very risky doing live in some very risky business what do you say so those who really come to hear the gospel of the kingdom produce more out of their life think about it those who come to know the mysteries the secrets of the kingdom produces what more out of the life that's what the gospel of the what they call the parable of the soul is about in matthew chapter 13. the parable of the soul is really about how people respond to the gospel praise god the different response that they have is what is treated as the wayside and the rocky ground and the with them among stones and good ground is the response they have to it and so he's saying that if the response is good to it to the gospel if you really receive and understand it then he says it produce much fruit in your life and it's always increasing i always love to tell it because of many times i read it in the passage it, it it says in matthew there that you know some some hundred and some sixty and some thirty four but i like to switch that around because I believe in what the Lord said further in John chapter 15 verse 1 to 8. That anyone who brings forth fruit, he prunes them that they'll bring forth more fruit. So it shouldn't be decreasing, it should be increasing. Hallelujah. And even Paul spoke to the, to the, 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 the people, the saints, and told them that, you know, we, we seek for ways to increase your faith. To add some measure of grace to you in Christ. Hallelujah. That you will be entire and complete and lacking nothing. Hallelujah. So he wants to come in the fullness of what he has in store for you. Amen. And so anyone in the kingdom, if you listen to the parables Jesus speak often time about the gospel of the kingdom. He always talk about it starting very small and increasing very large. All those parables, many of them are in Matthew chapter 13 about the parable of the mustard seed and the parable of the of the, the man that 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 um, the, the measure of leaving that was placed in measures of loaf, and it says each one expanded. Praise God, kingdom of the mustard seed. Hallelujah! It's showing that if there are different ways of which the kingdom starts small, but grows very humongous and big and large so he's saying it doesn't stay small so you, 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 you may start out small in the kingdom but it doesn't stay small you may start out poor in the kingdom but you don't stay poor you may start out sick in the kingdom but you don't stay sick 
<laughs> so anything that involves the gospel of the kingdom always speak of increase and improvement and prosperity hello somebody of course the devil makes people in unrighteousness prosper by giving them things that are at his disposal from other people under his control but we know that it is shortly because of what the word of god says about it when person prosper in their wickedness their hearts become harder towards god towards his word and towards the leading of his holy spirit they put confidence in the things that they have therefore god is absent from the constant direction that they need to really survive the onslaught and attack of satan so it's not really god just saying i throw them into the hand of the devil but they fall in the hand of the devil because they have become neglectful and and um rejecting of god amen so we have to make those points for us to understand the kingdom of God is showing God's governance and God's care over his kingdom, over those that are under his authority and command. Amen. Praise God. And so he says it is like a mustard seed which a man took and sowed in his field. Look who took the seed. Who took the seed? A man took the seed. And the man sold it what? The man sold it in his own field. The man had a field and sowed that mustard seed in his field. And what happened? It says, indeed, though it is the least of all seeds, but it grow is when it grows, it is greater than the herbs and becomes a tree. So that birds of the air come and nest in its branches he said another parable spoke he said the kingdom of heaven is like leaven which a woman took and hid in three measures of meal till it was all leaven she hid it in three measures of meal but it never stayed in the area it was hid it 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 just saturated the entirety of all the measure of meal that she had there the three measures of meal was saturated with that leaven he said the same way the kingdom it expands and, exp and is expressed in everything when it is sown. Hello, somebody. So anyone get a true grasp or whole of it, come on now, will be very fruitful, very prosperous. Oh, Jesus. Don't sound like nobody here believe that one. Hallelujah. But I'm experiencing it, so I can tell you. Praise God is coming because once you're locked into this understanding of how it operates, it follows you, you know. It follows you. So when David was saying, One thing have I desire that will I seek after that I will dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of my life, beholding the beauty of the Lord and in inquiring his temple. It's the kingdom of God he wants you to know about, you know. God David is a king. And if you don't know about the kingdom, he can't maintain his kingdom, you know. And that's why every righteous king was afterwards named after David, you know. David became an icon for good kings. That any king that come good, they say, is a son of David. And thousands of years later when Jesus come, they still say, son of David. They never say grandson. They never great, say great grandson. They say son. So he's a branch, he's an offspring of him. So David's name become an icon for good kings. Come on, somebody. And if God can use a man name, you know, a man like David and say he's an icon for good kings, then he can use my name too. Yeah. An icon for good disciples. Praise God. He can say he's one of his offspring. Praise God. One of his offspring. And they will know says a good one praise god because they, 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 that's what the lord made of abraham it wasn't jesus alone made abraham's name great that he says abraham is the father of us all not grandfather not great grandfather though it's thousands of years before us come on so he's, he's showing then Abraham still having children after all of these years, man. No grandchildren, children. Yep, and that great for true. Because the Lord said, man, you're going to have children more than you can count. 
Man, poor Sarah couldn't provide so much children. Praise God. Sarah would have mash out. Hallelujah. Couldn't go up to that amount of children at all. God would have put a special anointing. Oh, Jesus. If he just spit out baby so like a watermelon. <laughs> what? <laughs> But the Lord said, I'll make, a, I'll make you a great nation. That's what the Lord said to Abraham, you know. And I will bless you and make your name. That time Abraham never knew about Jesus' name. His, his name, the Lord said, would make great. Come on. So, so he said, I'll make your name great. And you shall be a blessing. Come on now. And when Lord is speaking, when God was speaking to him, that seed was there to come, you know. And he was still speaking to the seed of Abraham, in Abraham, which was Christ. Come on, that's why I say, a body you have prepared for me. Praise God. Says sacrifice and offering is not what you require, but a body. You have required of me. Praise God. What is Hebrews 10? Hebrews 10 verse 5. Therefore, when he came into the world, he said, Sacrifice and offering you did not desire, but a body you have prepared for me. Come on. And he said, Abraham rejoiced to see my day. Because we knew Abraham knows that when that seed come. That's when he's going to have the children like stars. It's not Isaac was the one that bring the children like stars. It's not Ishmael. Come on. It's Christ. Who, is the, who he says through him all the nations of the earth shall be blessed. Come on somebody. So it says your father Abraham rejoiced to see my day and saw it and was glad because the promise God made to him was now being fulfilled and when you wait long enough for a promise to fulfill when you see it being fulfilled you know they would say in Jamaican terminology you're glad back boss hallelujah you're overjoyed at seeing it come to fullness amen and Abraham was rejoicing to see this day that that people, children of faith of the faith that he have will be birthed through this seed that is through Christ. So through faith Christ brought us into Abraham's family. Come on now. And he says those who have the faith of Abraham are Abraham's seed and ears of the covenant ears of the promise. Amen. So he says you are included no sir? The blessing of every might come upon the Gentiles in Christ that we might receive the promise of the Spirit through faith. And He is the one that brought us into that promise through faith, through the word He taught us. Amen. Praise God. And the word of God says that that Christ is the one who declared to us what it was is in um, St. John 1, full of grace and truth full of grace and truth that that um the law came by moses but faith and truth came by jesus christ that's the one that's not 14 14 is not the one praise god hallelujah it says the law was given through moses but grace and truth came through jesus christ grace and truth came by Jesus Christ and says that grace is what makes us safe and truth is what brings us into true salvation sets us free hallelujah grace by grace you are saved but truth is what established you in the kingdom because you are not just saved from sin you are saved for the kingdom so most people in hearing about Christ, the gospel of Christ, they hear about the gospel of what good Christ did when he died for them. And then they just call that the gospel of Christ. But the gospel of Christ is the gospel that Jesus preached. 
and the gospel Jesus preached was more than about him dying for us. He told the disciples that he would die to prepare them for his death, but that wasn't his teaching. His teaching was about the kingdom. Hello, somebody. And we find that after he died, the question the disciples asked was not, so when are we going to go to heaven? That's what most Christians will ask today. So when are we going to go to heaven? But in Acts 1 verse 6, when they had come together after Jesus' death and resurrection and his appearance, they asked him, Lord, will you at this time, huh? Restore the kingdom of Israel. Kingdom to Israel. So listen to what they said. They didn't ask when we're going to go to heaven. But those who hear the gospel that they call gospel of Jesus and then preaching about Jesus and not about what Jesus was preaching, that is the question they ask. When we're going to go to heaven? But the, 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 the apostles were not asking when we're going to go to heaven because Jesus never preaching to them about going to heaven. Jesus was preaching them about the kingdom and they wanted to know what time the kingdom would be restored to Israel. Come on somebody. Now if it said what time the kingdom would be restored, the kingdom was in Israel's hand before. Watch the thing, you know. So they, their teaching was not to make them go to heaven. Their teaching was about having dominion and rulership restored to them in the earth. And they wanted to know when he going to restore to us back in the earth. Come on, somebody. And what was Jesus' answer? He said to them, it is not for you to know. That's verse 7 to 8. It is not for you to know the times and the season that the Father has fixed by his own authority. Come on. It's not for you to know the times and the season which the Father has put in his own authority. But you shall receive power. He's still telling them how the kingdom will manifest in them. Because the kingdom brings power. Glory to God. The kingdom reveals the power of God in the lives of a believer. Hello, somebody. Say, but you shall receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you, and you shall be what? Witnesses to me in Jerusalem and in all Judea and Samaria and to the ends of the earth. Now remember, is empowering them to still preach the gospel of the kingdom and remember we gave you from Matthew 24 verse 14 that when this gospel is preached in all the world then the end will come it's not end of creation it's not end of the world Come on, because the world will still exist, but not in the way that it is now. Just like we will exist, but not in the way that we are now. Praise God. So he, he says, the end will come when this gospel of the kingdom is preached. So I say, I'm empowering you to preach it. So when the time for the kingdom to restore to you says, it's not for you to know that till you do this. Because then the end will come. You got it? Then the end will come. So so I, I, I was looking at the word restore. I was looking at the word restore. And the definition in the Bible. It, it, to restore means to return to a person. To return to a person as a specific thing. Which he has lost. To return to a person. A specific thing which he has lost or which has been taken from him and unjustly detained. Taken from him and unjustly withheld from him. Detained from him. Come on. We restore lost and stolen goods.
to owners we restore what lost and stolen goods to owners uh, look at genesis 20 where it says when the lord told um when it was the man who took abraham's wife abimelech genesis 20 he says now therefore restore to the man his wife restore to the man his wife so so he, 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 he says now therefore restore the man's wife for he is a prophet hallelujah come on who was that it was abraham abraham and he will pray for you and you shall live but if you do not restore her know that you shall surely die you and all who are yours you don't understand this thing, man. You understand it? Huh? Oh, Jesus. Man. You, you understand say, what the Lord have determined for you? When you understand what is yours, and you say, Lord, uh, you understand it? Thing? The Lord will wipe out something, make you get it, you know. If they don't give it, that is kingdom, you know. That is kingdom. So you, by worldly standard, would be saying, "Boy, me lose them. Boy, me have just suffered the loss, and go and make the best of what left." But kingdom is saying, "If what is yours not come to you, you know, there's a kingdom fighting to ensure, say, whoever trying to block the word of the king that is yours have to face the wrath of the king." You understand it, thing, no? That's why kingdom message so important. And he says, now the man's wife was taken from him. It's his wife. But Abraham had told her to say, well, you are my sister because he saw how wickedly the people live in the land and thought that they would, for sure they would kill him to get her because she was very beautiful. And you know, say, men, when they kill um, men, for wives that were less beautiful. So you just imagine what they would have do to him. So he said, do me the favor when they ask you. <laughs> Save me life. When they ask you. And it was not a lie because she was indeed his brother. Or just different from a different mother. Hallelujah. And so he says, then Abraham said to Sarah, his wife, she is my sister. And Abimelech, king of Gerar, sent and took Sarah. Because he want he see a beautiful lady out there as a king can just go and take her. But being sent to her, he, he didn't um, do anything with her yet until he summoned her from the chamber where he put her in. Where people were being treating her and dressing her and preparing her for the king. Then the king could summon her which night he wanted to have her. So that's what the Lord was saying. I was the one who kept you from touching her, you know. Because if I if I were lawyer to touch her, you is a dead man and all your household. Because this man is a prophet, and if I touch a prophet wife, not even dead dog dead like you. Amen. So, so he says, She is my sister, Abimelech, king of Gerar, send and took her. But God came to Abimelech in a dream by night. Sometimes people get warning in dream and they push it aside and Treat it lightly until something hit them. But this king, we have something about him. He, he pay attention. <laughs> he pay at, it was a dream. He, he says, indeed, he says in a dream, the Lord said to him, indeed, you are a dead man. Not you're going to be, you know. And you not touch the man wife yet. He's a dead man and you don't touch him yet. Much more if you touch him. You have to understand kingdom. He says, you are a dead man because of the woman whom you have taken. For she is a man's wife. And Abimelech had not come near her. He said, Lord, you will slay a righteous nation also. Come on. Praise God. He said, did, did he not say to me, she's my sister. And she, even herself said, he's my brother. In the integrity of my heart and the innocence of my hands. I don't, in other words, say, I did not know. 
You see how God will treat a wicked man even in our ignorance. What the Lord said in verse 6. God said to him in a dream, Yes, I know that you did this in the integrity of your heart. In other words, I know you never know when you do this. And God didn't punish him for it. You see it? Look what the Lord said. For I also withheld you. I withheld you from sinning. Now if God can withhold a sinner from committing certain sin, why can we withhold the righteous? That's why I can't play for them again. And it's about, oh, nobody not perfect, but you have to understand you are a sinner. Say by grace. No man. This man was a wicked man and he can't talk about the integrity of him heart in a sin. And you righteous can't have none. Come on now. So he says, therefore I did not let you touch her. God kept him from doing it. In other words, every time he would have called her, he called somebody else. Come on. And so the Lord says, it is I who kept you. He thought it was just say, he not ready for yet, but it is the Lord who kept him from touching her. You see it? He says, now therefore restore the man's wife. For he, that's Abraham, is a prophet and he will pray for you. Come on. Now notice, he never touched the man's wife. Correct? But still the Lord said, the prophet must pray for you. you know? It's not the man's wife must pray for you. The prophet must pray for you. In other words, do the judgment been withheld, you know, if the prophet now intercede, you know, it's still a go like you. Because judgment was already in his house, you know. Let me show you. See, look what happened. It says, the, the, verse 7, he will pray for you and you shall live. But if you do not restore, know that you shall surely die. You are all yours. Next verse. I'll show you the next one. So Abimelech rose early in the morning, called all his servants, told all these things in their hearing, and the men were very much afraid when they hear it. And Abimelech called Abraham and said to him, What have you done to us? Have I offended you that you have brought on me and on my kingdom and my what? Kingdom and great sin. And you have done deeds to me that ought not to be done. And Abimelech said to Abraham, What did you have in view that you have done this thing? Amen. And Abraham said, because I thought, surely the fear of God is not in this place and they will kill me on account of my wife. But indeed, she is truly my sister. She is the daughter of my father, but not the daughter of my mother. And she became my wife. And it came to pass when God caused me to wander from my father's house that I said to her, this is your kindness that you should do for me. In every place, wherever you go, say to the, say of me, he is my brother. Amen. Then Abimelech took sheep, oxen, male, female servants, gave them to Abraham, restored Abraham, his wife, to him. And Abimelech said, see, my land is before you. Dwell where it pleases you. Then Sarah, he, then to Sarah he said, Behold, I have given your brother a thousand pieces of silver. Indeed, this vindicates you before all who are with you and before everybody. Thus she was rebuked because he's actually uh, giving her the, the price you know, for being with a woman. If you understand. Right, so he's actually giving her the wages of a prostitute. <laughs> That's why it was a rebuke to her. So he says, So Abraham prayed to God. Abraham, what? Prayed to God, and God healed Abimelech. Abraham prayed to God, and God healed him. As the Lord said, the prophet have to pray for you. For you to be healed. If the prophet don't pray for you, no matter how your friend up with the wife, you now go get it. <laughs> because then she, what happened in verse 17? God healed Abimelech, his wife, his female servants. Then they bore 
children for the Lord had what? Close up all the wombs of the house of Abimelech because of Sarah, Abraham's wife. Come on. Close up with me. That man with a his whole family would have dead or like they never exist. His family line would have died with him. Come on. That's how powerful the prayer of the prophet was over the life of Abimelech. And yet still that man never touched. Understand that is just showing you the power that God gave to man in the kingdom. Oh, Jesus, that's why we say his kingdom and is not kingdom. His kingdom, and God still say man is the head of every woman. So he still say you have to understand the principles. Not like in like England, uh, Queen of England. I know you can't find no king. Be a queen. Hallelujah. The queen be the miss no one king, man. That's what he says. You need to understand. You need to understand the kingdom of God. Oh, it operates. Hello. So God would cause the man whole house to perish. You know? Kind of mess with Abraham's estate. <laughs> you understand anything? It's all estate. Oh, that's all kingdom operates. You understand anything? And say you don't understand a thing. Amen. So if you understand, you understand why kingdom message. When they preach kingdom message, me feel very safe. Because me know say. <laughs> we may not lack understanding of this thing. This put me in a position of advantage against every opposition. Hello, somebody. Because it's so God set it. No, sir. Praise God. So you got to understand the kingdom. The kingdom is promised. The kingdom is promised to, 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 to us. Amen. The kingdom is promised to us. The word of God said it is God's good pleasure to give to you. God's good pleasure to what? Give to you the kingdom. In other words, so, and he's not talking about heaven. It's not heaven is given into you. Is the kingdom of heaven. Kingdom of heaven is used synonymously with the, the term kingdom of God. Hallelujah is the same thing. It's still emphasizing kingdom with us, a kingdom of God or, or kingdom of heaven. Same kingdom. Hallelujah. Praise God. The kingdom is promised to the Jews. You know that the kingdom was promised to the Jews? All right, I see there. Matthew 19, verse 27 to 30. Matthew 19, verse 27 to 30. We're going to give you more. That's not only those words promised, but we start in there. It says, Then Peter answered and said to him, See, we have left what? We have left. No, Peter is a Jew. Correct. So the apostles that Jesus chose the twelve apostles were they all Jews? Correct. What you think? We have left all and followed you. Therefore, what shall we have? So Jesus said to them, As surely I say to you, that in the regeneration or in the new world, in the generation regeneration or in the new world, the new age, when the Son of Man sits on the throne of his glory you who have followed me will sit on 12 thrones judging the 12 tribes of Israel judging the what no he's telling his 12 apostles you and judge 12 tribes sitting on throne judging them come on now hello somebody hallelujah come on now and we know that there's even a seal of calling of who the Lord said would be called. Hello? Come on. Praise God. They talk about a seal from Revelation 7. What is Revelation 7 verse? I think it's 7 verse 1 to 8. Yes, about the 144,000 from Israel. 
after these things I saw four angels standing at the four corners of the earth holding the four winds of the earth that the wind should not blow on the earth on the sea or any tree then I saw another angel ascending from the east having the seal of the living God and he cried with a loud voice to the four angels to whom it was granted to harm the earth and the sea saying do not harm the earth the sea or the trees till we have sealed the servants of our God on their foreheads come on now what was those servants being sealed out of they are being sealed out of Israel look at it that's one nation not all the nations of the world, just one. And it says, And I heard the number of those who were sealed. 144,000 of what? All the tribes of what? The children of Israel. And it gives 12,000 from each tribe of the tribe of Judah, from Reuben, from God, from Asher, from Naphtali, from Manasseh. 12,000 from each tribe. Praise God. Hallelujah and uh, from Simeon and from Levi praise God and from Issachar and from Zebulun hallelujah and from the tribe of Joseph and Benjamin 12,000 amen and we know 12, 12 is 144 and so a 144,000 was taken from each tribe you know, the, the, when he talk about the time of restoring is still the Lord was telling even amongst the twelve of his apostles you're going to judge and sit on thrones over each of these twelve in other words the twelve wasn't randomly chosen a twelve was chosen to rule over twelve tribe of the nation What's that? that's what I'm showing you twelve was chosen to rule over the tribe but it never stopped there he says the kingdom is also promised to Gentiles kingdom is also promised to who? Gentile he says that in verse 9 to 17 of Revelation 7 verse 9 to 17 speaks of a great multitude from every nation that now was not Israel that now was from Gentiles and he says after these things I looked and behold a great multitude which no one could number of what? If you notice that don't say of of Israel. It says that of all nations, tribes, peoples, and tongues standing before the throne and before the Lamb, clothed with what? White robes with palm branches in their hands and crying out with a loud voice saying, Salvation belong to our God who sits on the throne and to the Lamb and all the angels stood around the throne and the elders and the four living creatures and fell on their faces before the throne and worshipped God. Hallelujah. Saying, Amen. Blessing and glory and wisdom, thanksgiving and honor and power and might be to our God forever and ever. Amen. And then one of the elders answered saying to me, Who are these arrayed in white robes where did they come from and he said to me sir you know he means let me know how many ask you he says <laughs> these are the ones who come out of the great tribulation and washed their robes and made them white in the blood of the lamb praise god Therefore they are before the throne of God and serve him day and night in his temple. Hallelujah. He who sits on the throne will dwell among them and they shall neither hunger anymore nor thirst anymore. Sun shall not strike them nor any heat for the lamb is in the midst of the throne will shepherd them and lead them. Eh? To live in fountains of water, God will wipe away every tear from their eyes. Come on, somebody. The kingdom of God is promised to the Jews and it's also promised to the Gentiles. Look at 1 Corinthians 6 verse 1 to 11. To show more on the Gentile side that we're not just waving palm branches. We're judging. 
Because you know something. Because the Jehovah Witness tell about, oh, you're on earth, waving brown brands before the throne. But those one forty four thousand in heaven. Nothing, no gossip. Lies, lies, lies. Hallelujah. First Corinthians 6, verse 1 to 11. Is Gentiles Paul is speaking to when he wrote this letter? And those were saints of Corinth. Hello. And he said to them, Do dear any of you having a matter against another, go to law before who? The unrighteous and not before the saints. In other words, say, if you want to judge a matter, carry before the saints. <laughs> Come on now. Carry before the saints. No, sir. And he says, Do you not know the saints will judge what? The world? Oh, yes. The saints will judge the world. Come on. Hallelujah. That's also, uh, well, uh, that's also in Romans chapter 8, the Revelation chapter 8. Revelation chapter 8 verse 1 to 5 and from verse 5 to 13 you can read that with your time and get some more out of it. Revelation chapter 8 verse 1 to 5. Let's flip out that and come back to this and show them some more about the saints judging the world. Hallelujah. He says when he opened the seventh seal there was silence in heaven for about half an hour. And I saw the seven angels who stand before God to, and to them were given what? Seven trumpets. Then another angel having a gold incense came and stood at the altar. He was given much incense that he should offer it with the prayers of what? Offer the incense with, with the prayers of all the saints upon the golden altar which was before the throne. And what happened? And the smoke of the incense with the prayers of the saints ascended before God from the angels. And then the angel took the censer, filled it with the fire from the altar, and threw it. Threw it where? To the earth. And there were noises and thunderings and lightning and earthquake. So the seven angels who had the seven trumpets prepared themselves to, to sound. Hello. Praise God. Hallelujah. The first angel sound, hail and fire followed, mingled with blood, and they were thrown to the earth. And a third of the trees were burnt up, and all the green grass was burnt up. Then the second angel sounded something like a great mountain, burning with fire, was thrown into the sea. And a third of the sea became blood. A third of the living creature in the sea died, and a third of the ships were destroyed. Come on. Then the third angel saw it and a great star fell from heaven burning like a torch. And it fell on a third of the rivers and the springs of water. The name of the star is Wormwood. And a third of the water became Wormwood. Many men died from the water because it was made bitter. Hallelujah. Come on somebody. Then the fourth angel sounded and a third of the sun was struck and a third of the moon and a third of the stars so that a third of them were darkened and a third of the day did not shine. And likewise the night. And I looked and I heard an angel flying through the midst of heaven saying with a loud voice, Woe, woe, woe to the inhabitants of the earth because of the remaining blast of the trumpet of the three angels who are about the sound is the prayers of the saints released those seven judgments that start to unleash the earth. You know, the bitter no says there is we Instagram judge the world, but we don't go and sit in no courtroom by this government and they appoint us as judges to judge them. He said the prayers of the saints will burn as incense as fire and breathe judgment upon the earth come on somebody you better know that it's coming with more hello back to first corinthians 6 we just want to show you somebody judgment make you understand look more amen praise god so it says you will judge the world did he say that verse first corinthians 6 verse verse 2 do you not know that the saints will judge the world huh? 
and he says and if the world will be judged by you are you unworthy to judge smallest matters in your midst come on huh Paul was saying this to their rebuke amen because he wanted to know you are here and the Lord promised a kingdom to you hello he must rule over the domain which the Lord put over you put you over which is over the world and over angels for he said in verse 3 don't you know you're going to judge angels do you not know that we shall judge angels how much more the things pertaining to this life so they say you must judge things pertaining to this life and most of those things pertaining to this life the people them run away from they just want to know when we all get to heaven what a day of rejoicing that will be oh yeah you have some things to judge and to deal with here while you're here amen so it says you must judge things pertaining to this life correct that's in verse 3 you must judge matters between brothers that is in verse 5 judge matters between brothers because he says if you then have judgment concerning things pertaining to this life and do you appoint those who are least esteemed by the church to judge i say to your shame it is so that there is that there is not a wise man among you not even one will be able to judge between brother and brother come on they don't come to the church for judgment they check friends uh, family member in a blood relative flesh is what they consult and seeking judgment through flesh does not complement the things of the kingdom because flesh and blood will not inherit the kingdom of god what you say right so we know that they just don't understand the kingdom yet so he says you must judge brother between brother the righteous the righteous will inherit the kingdom because the right the unrighteous will not inherit the kingdom also the unrighteous will not inherit the kingdom of god verse 9 to verse 10 the unrighteous will not inherit the kingdom of god he says do you not know that the unrighteous will not inherit the kingdom of god do you not do not be received neither fornicators nor idolaters nor adulterers nor homosexuals nor sodomites nor thieves nor covetous nor drunkards nor revilers nor extortioners will inherit the kingdom anybody practice such thing can't inherit it come on because the kingdom of god is for the righteous what you say that's in verse 11 the kingdom of god is for the righteous because he said in verse 11 and such were some of you in other words some of you were like those who would not inherit it but what happened you were washed and you were sanctified but you were justified in the name of the lord jesus and by the spirit of our god no sir so the unrighteous will not inherit the kingdom of god the unrighteous are not fit to judge the unrighteous are not fit to judge or to rule in the kingdom of god verse 4 verse 4 of first corinthians chapter 6 says if then you have judgments concerning things pertaining to this life do you appoint those who are least esteemed by the church to judge in other words do you seek judgment from people who are not in the church a full full people like so can you seek judgment from those in the church and those who have strong standing in the two as sometimes they look for the weak i want them for around the finger and say well you ain't say it to me you know the trick thing there right? I may talk to other bridge in turn other bridge and let me say yes I true you shouldn't do it so because you're talking to babes and if you talk to babes babes not going to give you a mature answer so sometimes people want kiddies answer then talk to kids 
because they don't want to be responsible about the answer that they should have you get it in? but if you want mature answer you must talk to the mature the spiritually mature you know talk to those who you know say no so mature because they live weird and hope say what them say makes sense because them say it so you must write even them says yes I go mm -mm, them now say nothing because they have a plank in their eye they need to take the plank out that they can see clearly so if you want somebody to examine the thing clearly with you make somebody examine the body see clearly now go to somebody who already blind and they say, You see what I see? You see what I see? They're just looking for company to agree with you in a wrong. Not true? So you have to know the, the kingdom of God is calling us to a different level, a different state of mind. Hello? So the people of the people who are the disciples or appointed apostles were not seeking to go to heaven. Their first question was. When will the kingdom be restored to us? And you need to know. Align yourself with the kingdom. Come on. And it says to enter the kingdom you must be born again. As John 3 verse 3 and 5. Praise God. You must be born of the kingdom. Born again. He says born of the water and of the spirit. For example, a man is born of the water and the spirit. He cannot enter. The kingdom of God is talking about your born of the water is about your repentance of sin because born of the water is a testimony of you turning from your sin. You can't turn from it and still in it. You get the thing? You can't turn from darkness and still in darkness. That's, the Lord would tell you you're lying and you're not practicing the truth. If you turn from darkness, you are now in light. No, so. Right, so that's what water baptism is about. It's about your denouncing the hidden works of darkness of this world and turning to the God, your salvation, not true, from the power of Satan to the power of God. Amen. And so you now repenting of your sin and turning to the Lord. Now he says you must be born of the Spirit. And he says for as many who are led by the Spirit, they are the sons of God and he said the sons of God are the sons of the kingdom come on somebody the sons of the kingdom that's what Jesus says those were the good seeds that were planted he says they were the sons they are the sons of the kingdom and he was talking in the parable in Matthew chapter 13 about the wheat and the tears he says they must abide together till they have harvest but then the day will come when the Father will remove out of his kingdom all things that offend and those that practice lawlessness. Come on now. Right? So he wants you to know about the kingdom. We just gave you some valuable information on it to prep you, to tease your appetite to go get the desire more because there's a whole lot more in it that we could share within this time. But just to tease your appetite to get some more your time question comments Praise. answers Praise. Praise God Hallelujah Good night everyone um, just a little more information on the, mm -hmm. um, if we do not speak the gospel of the kingdom, mm -hmm. then we will not come to the end of Christ, we will not return. I just want to know if, if we don't, we don't speak to the end of the earth, will he not come or will he take longer? Or? No, it's the preachers that will be bringing the gospel to the ends of the earth. Everybody is not a preacher. Oh, but they, but they, so when he said that that was actually addressed to the apostles context is very important because is some will just say it's to everybody everybody must go preach it but it's not everybody and that's why Paul made the, the statement are all apostles are all evangelists do all do miracles do all have the gift of healing and faith 
So he says there are persons called to that specific role. But as Paul said it, um, which was a scripture we gave this morning, it says Ephesians 6 in verse 10 to verse verse 10 to 12 or 10 to 10 to 16. Here he says, and you should pray for me that utterance be given to me. Pray for me. What is what verse is that? Verse 19. Pray for me that utterance may be given to me. Paul was ministering to the whole church at Ephesus. That is the Ephesians. But he says they should pray for him that utterance be given to him that he will open his mouth boldly to make known the mystery of the gospel for which he as an ambassador in chains was called that he may speak boldly as he ought to speak. So, so anyone who is a believer can of course share the gospel even um, Stephen um, who was not an apostle who was uh, appointed as a deacon to serve at the widow's table he shared the gospel but you know that was the one chance he got really to share it uh, he killed him on spot right because but there are persons who are called to declare this and then paul is saying pray for us also just like when jesus was ministering and he he said to the disciples uh, um the the harvest is plenty but the laborers are pray pray to the father that he will send more laborers in his vineyard more labor so it's not everybody's the laborers Right, so but there are those who are there to treat the the, the, the the vineyard, treat the vines, to prune and to clip and to nurture that the vine produce much fruit. And those laborers are those the Bible speaks about in what Jesus said in Ephesians chapter four, verse eleven, that he has given to the church apostles, prophets, evangelists, pastors and teachers for the perfected of the saints for the equipping of the ministry amen that there be no more children tossed to and fro with every wind of doctrine but that they come into the full nature stature and, and knowledge of the lord and savior jesus christ amen and be of one faith so there's a lot of work to be done on that for the church to come into their fullness to equip with the message because really it's more than just talking the message the preachers are out there preaching it but they are not just to preach the word. They must preach their lives. And you as an extension of them. Must minister to, to by your life. So the life you live. Is, is pretty much confirming the word. They are preaching. You got it. But if you don't live the life. Then there will be no connection. Between the message and the messenger. And it will lose its authenticity and the command of authority for persons to really believe that the message is real. Amen. So your life, that's why Paul said in 1 Corinthians 3, 2 Corinthians 3, I believe. He says, you are my epistle. So he said, it's more than the letters I write that become scripture. You are that message now. You are the epistle. Not written on stones and tablets, but written on a heart to the Holy Spirit. Amen. Praise God. Say, so you are our epistle, written on our hearts, known and read by what? All men. Known and read by all men. He says, your light must shine for the world to see that this gospel of light and life that we are declaring is evident in us. Amen. That God is expanding his family and you are a part of it. Amen. You got it? Praise God. So that's what it's all about. We we, we, we call to preach it and God knows that those who are here to preach it will preach it. No matter how much people come not preaching it, others will rise up to do it. Because the word of God will be accomplished. He's watching over his word to bring it to pass. And his word cannot return to him 
void it must accomplish what it was sent forth to to do amen so it will be done whether or not people choose to preach it or not or some just want to keep on talking about heaven and hell and go to heaven and rest the, the kingdom will be declared throughout all the earth and the end will come come on somebody so everybody need to know it's, it's not something that they can stop from happening because God already predetermined it's going to be done and God know who is going to use to do it. You understand? So it will be done. Hallelujah. And, and what the Lord said will be done will be done. Hallelujah. Praise. Any more questions or comments you have down there? Even those online you can ask questions. Hallelujah. We don't expect that those who are watching online just to become observers. You expect them to be participating in this. Though they are on their home watching, they must have a response. Otherwise, you must start locking along from their home. Praise God. But they need to have a response. You can't be weak after we teach and just looking. No, you must have a response. Hallelujah. Praise God. Hallelujah. Any more questions and comments? Hallelujah. Good night, everyone. Apostle, I have a comment. Yes, sir. Um, on a daily basis, I can say out of every three or four, four persons that speak to about the word of God, they, hmm. there's their comment. One of their comments is, me not perfect. <laughs> <laughs> so, Come on. Um, very common. We were um, at work the other day, and three persons were in the guard room who said they are Christians, and another he was just listening to our conversation. So I said, I asked them the question: Aren't you Christ? Are you, aren't you representing Christ in the earth? And he said, Yes. So I said, Isn't Christ perfect? He said, Well, yes. So Mr. All comes, you're not perfect. <laughs> All comes, you can't be perfect. I said, you must be perfect. And he said, well, that's not true. Another one, he said, um, Christ, do, um, Jesus not cut off nobody, or, or God not cut off nobody. So I said, but um, in John, is it John 5, verse 12, um, it says, if you don't bear no fruit, the Father will cut you off. 15 verse 2. 15 verse 2, sorry. Yeah. And he said, well, you have a point, you know. You have a point. Me say, so how comes your child again? You don't know that. And, you know, it, 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 it reminds me so much, Apostle, that um, if I was not in this house, I wouldn't have learned that much. I, I would be sitting oh on the God. bench with them. You yeah. understand? So I just want to give God the glory that, mm. you know, I can help them if they're willing to accept because sometimes they, they held on to what they, they were That's taught. That's true. That's true. Yes, they held on to what they were taught. So to God be the glory. Praise God. You know, we, we have to minister to those what we have learned. And I believe if more start to share and communicate in what they learn, it, it will um, this extinguish all the liquor false teachings and false opinions and views that is clutter, clustering up the lives of and fate of many and causing them to malfunction because they believe that the expectation and their, their, towards God and God's power in their life is very low. And we are saying that the power that God is working towards us is not near low. Nothing at all near law. He says, in fact, the same power he demonstrated to raise up Christ from the dead above all principalities and powers and rulers of darkness and above the heavenlies and seated him at his right. And he says that the same power working towards us. And he calls it his immeasurable power. In other words, you cannot measure it. And if such a power is working towards you, it must produce good fruit because it's not the power of man it is the power of God praise God and the gospel of Christ which is the gospel of the kingdom is declaring that power available to you amen and so you don't you are left without excuse to say well because it's my flesh because of the world because of what the world stay because the power of God is bigger than all of that 
and so you need to just truly believe mix faith with the word and the power of God will be unleashed to you to live the life that God called you to live what do you say praise God any more questions and comments there we want to address them bless the Lord hallelujah none praise God all right we're gonna stop right there we're out of time anyway but we are not out of word but we just want to give you as much as possible to build up your most holy faith in the Lord amen praise God bow your heads with me we want to pray father we just thank you for the grace you have given us through Jesus Christ it is grace that grants us the ability to receive understanding into these spiritual things for you said a natural man cannot understand spiritual things but they are spiritually discerned but we have that spirit to understand even the very mind of God thank you for for that deposit within our spirit Lord that you are releasing into us to get deeper fresher newer understanding of what you declare and purpose for us in Christ Jesus and that we will not just be hearers of the word but be doers also to manifest it in the earth that others will see and glorify our father in heaven we thank you for all his benefits and we give it the praise and the glory that rightfully belongs to you in Jesus' name. Come on, give him the praise right now. Hallelujah. Give him the praise. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Thank you. You're going to give you a chance to sow and then release you. Those who are watching, you're watching Increase in Faith Deliverance Ministry International. We are at 3 East Street, Montego Bay, Jamaica. I'm Apostle Richard Vega and declaring to you the gospel of Christ and his kingdom. We hope that we are able to get that opportunity to mature you in the Lord and in your faith that you will not be as children tossed to and fro with every wind and doctrine of crafty men and the devil and schemes of Satan to corrupt your faith and weaken your position against the offerings of Satan but that you increase in your faith and in your walk and your knowledge of the Lord and really be the person that God has called you to be that offspring, that branch, that son in God that will manifest his glory in the earth. And he wants you to do it from now. Not when he come and but when you go in heaven. But you need to know this is available to you right now. The kingdom is at work and he wants you to have access, enter and possess your inheritance. In Jesus name. Amen. So if you want to know more about this ministry, check out our website. It's increasingfaithintl.org. You can read a page about us and hear a mission statement and prophetic statement and visions, long-term and short-term goals. We hope to accomplish whatever the Lord lay in your heart to connect with that you want to help us to accomplish together. We can do more. You can also show to us through that website. Hallelujah. And if you have any further questions, you can call me, Richard Fagan, at 876-839-9390 or 876-557-2427. We are here to really help you to build your faith, your most holy faith in the Lord. So continue to keep linking with us. Look for us on YouTube and on Facebook. Subscribe or send a friend's request to Richard Fagan. And you will see, you'll be connected to all the streams, hallelujah, for broadcasts and recordings to build your faith. We look forward to seeing you next time. Till next time, be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. Leave those signs to Jesus. I want to release a blessing and a great grace over your life. Father, in the name of Jesus, we bind every sickness and every disease. We bind every lack every depression and stress and anxiety. We bind every confusion and distortion, contention and strife. Every this, this spirit, so oh God, that have encroached around your people. We release angelic hosts against them right now in the name of Jesus. We bind and shout down their plans, every diabolic plan and scheme of Satan. We render ineffective in Jesus' name. We pray that the grace of God will increase more and more in their life for your grace is sufficient. 
hallelujah and is able to keep them from falling and to bring them raise them to a position of victory power and authority in jesus name come on give god the praise right now hallelujah, hallelujah. glory to god may the lord bless you and keep you may the lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you may the lord live up his countenance upon you and give you his peace god bless you real good be strong in the lord and the power of his might next time stay tuned we'll be looking forward to hear more from you in jesus name amen